Hello, everyone. This is Bodie Minster, the Archer API guy, and I'm just getting started here with a series of videos to help you get started with your Archer API development. I thought the best place to start would be with Archer authentication. So we'll begin today looking at my local instance of Archer, which you can see is on version 6.12 P4. And in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and create a user. All right, we'll go ahead and create a user. We'll call this user Joe User. And we'll give him J User as his username. We're going to set his password. It's really important here when you create users for use with your API, please ensure that you do not check force password change on next sign in. If you do, it will prevent you from being able to use that user to make API calls because the API is expecting you get a particular response. And instead, what it gets is a web page challenging you to change your password. So that's a big problem that you will run into. Make sure you do not check that box when you create this user. For now, we're going to leave this guy as just a member of the general user role. That'll be fine. You can see he has no group memberships. That's perfect for us. Now we can see our J user in the list. And just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and log out. And I'm configured for single sign-on, so. I'll do some manual login here and log in as J user. Okay, and so we can, we've confirmed that this user that we just created is able to sign on interactively. You can see he doesn't have permission really to anything. He can only see one workspace and he has no permission to any applications within that workspace. So I'll go ahead and log him out and log back in as myself. And then we will go and do this first through the platform API. I'm going to use a tool here called Fiddler. Fiddler is a tool that's built by Telerik, and it is useful for a lot of things. I use it for a lot of my rapid testing of API calls. This lets me test my API without having to write code. You can see that I have basically the portions of an HTTP request here. I have the verb, which in this case is a post. I have the URL that you can see is pointing at my local host. Because I have only one IP address for my local development machine, I chose not to install Archer in the root of the default website. So it's installed as an application. You may not have this component in your URL depending on how you installed Archer. And then I'm going to append platform API. And then this is the resource within the platform API that gives me access to the login functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these pieces. The only things that you really have to tell this, you have to provide the accept and the content type headers here telling us that we're going to send and receive JSON. And then you can see that I've got my JSON user here, or excuse me, my JSON request body here showing a user, I'm gonna change this to be the user that we just created. We just created J user, and we just gave him a password of Archer123 exclamation point. And then with the right verb in URL, the right request headers and the right request body, all I have to do is click execute. Now, because I'm the only person using this web server, when I hit this, this is the first request that my API has received in a while, and sometimes it can take a moment for the first response. Okay, so this Fiddler gives you the option to look at your response in a lot of different ways. You can see over here on the left, it shows you that this request from uh, for localhost came back with an HTTP 200 response, which means okay. This indicates that our web server received the response, understood it, handled it, and served us a response. So in this case, we're going to look at it as JSON because we know that's what it's giving us back. We can look at it raw if you'd like to. This is kind of a formatted view. If you choose to look at it in raw, you can see that it's just a bunch of unformatted text. 
If you want to, you can copy this out, paste it into something like Notepad++ and format it yourself, but Fiddler makes it a little bit easier here. So here you can see the different portions of this response. First of all, we have this is successful parameter. When you get an HTTP 200, that means that the request was well formed and the server was able to respond. It may respond with a message telling you that I don't like your credentials and I wasn't able to log you in. In that case, you'll get back an HTTP 200, but is successful will be false and the response will not contain a session token. So this is the first thing you need to check is was your response a successful response? Then you have the requested object, which is gonna always be the payload of your platform API requests. And here you can see that it shows you which instance I was connecting to, that I was connecting from the REST API. And here's the thing that I'm after. This is my session token. So the rest of this is some information about my user telling me what my user configuration looks like. And here's my user ID. So 1373. And if we go back to Archer, and look again at my user that we just created here. You can look in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see the ID is 1373. So this is creating a session for Joe user. Now, once again, if you had an is successful equals false, your requested object would most likely be null. And then this validation messages collection would contain something telling you a little bit more about why it couldn't serve your request the way you wanted it to. A lot of times what you'll get is invalid credentials. If I were to go back and do this again, but I give the wrong password, I'll just delete the exclamation point and issue this request once more. Now you can see that my is successful is false. My requested object is null and I have some validation messages in the collection telling you invalid credential, login not valid. So it's not gonna tell you whether it was username or password, which would be a security concern. It's just telling you the combination of username and password you gave me isn't something that I was able to get access to Archer with. So try again. So that's how we would do this thing through the platform API, which is also sometimes called the REST API. You can do the same thing through the SOAP API and in this case, I'm going to use a tool called SOAP UI. SOAP UI gives us the ability to make SOAP requests without having to generate the SOAP envelopes ourselves. So what I'll do, this product is created by SmartBear, and it's a freely available product. I highly recommend it. What you'll do is come in here and tell it that you want to do a new SOAP project. And I'm going to name this project Dev Instance. And I'll give it the initial WSDL. WSDL stands for Web Service Discovery Language. And <clears throat> this is essentially a way that old ASMX style .NET web services and other services that kind of implement this interface can describe their capabilities. So in this case, Archer has a web service that's been around since the early days of Archer, since the 4X versions. And we're now, of course, in the 6X versions. This service has been around a long time. And the WSDL is a way that we can tell anybody that would want to call this service what capabilities the service has. So we'll provide the WSDL in the following format. WS is the folder within our web application that contains this service. And the service that has the authentication methods in it is called general. And then we're going to append WSDL. We'll put question mark WSDL at the end of that to tell it that we want it to retrieve the WSDL. We're going to leave this box checked here, create a sample request for all operations, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So when I say that, you can see what happens here is SOAP UI goes out and contacts the server and finds the WSDL, which defines these operations in the general service. It's created two sets here, one for SOAP 1.0 and one for SOAP 1.2. We're going to use 1.2. And you can actually expand this method and have a look at the sample request. And what it's actually built for you here is a SOAP envelope. You can see it's created the XML namespaces at the top. 
and that it's using those namespaces down below. So here we have a SOAP namespace that you can see is being used here to define the header and the body. And then we have a web namespace that's being used to define the properties of the method that we're calling. So this is the actual operation, create domain user session from instance. And here we need our username, which is JUser. Our instance is called dev. I want to point out here that <clears throat> my instance name is called dev in all caps. And although username is not case sensitive, instance name is. So if I were to type that in lowercase, it would fail. I'm going to go ahead and put my password in here. And this user is not attached to a domain, so I'm going to pass no argument for that. This is what a SOAP envelope looks like. And this is why I like SOAP UI, because this isn't complicated, but it has to be done just right. And it's something where uh, a spare or a stray character can break the request. So it's nice to have a tool that can write this for you. And I can just go in here and pop the values that I need into it. And then you click this little play button up here in the corner. And we get a response back. And this response has a soap body. And there's my session token right there in the middle of this soap body. Now, it is a little bit difficult to see. So what I'll do here is copy this out. And I will put it into Notepad++. And I'll use my XML Tools plugin to format that so it's a little bit easier to see. And you can see here we have an HTTP response of 200 OK. These are the response headers, including the content length. And then here's the actual response. So it still comes back to us in a SOAP envelope, which is just the way that we sent it off in the first place. But here, our SOAP envelope contains a body that contains an object called the create domain user session from instance response. And within that, here is the session token. Now, these session tokens can be created through either API and they will be respected in both APIs. So once I have that token, I can make calls through either SOAP or REST using it. But it's important to note one other thing that I wanna to talk to you about briefly, which is just that this is the Archer control panel. If your Archer instance is configured for single sign-on, and mine is, and I'm just using Windows integrated authentication. So when we look at single sign-on, it's not a complicated setup, but you have this box here, allow manual bypass. Manual bypass allows me to put a query string parameter that you saw me do earlier. You can put a query string of manual login equals true and it will allow you to specify an Archer account that is not the same as the logging in user. If you do not enable manual bypass, then you will not be able to use authentication through the REST API. You must use SOAP to authenticate if manual bypass is not enabled for single sign-on. So that is a tricky little piece of information that can be hard to find.